All right, guys. Um, I know a lot of you had questions about how you got, how I run my library, how I organize and manage my tracks. Um, here's a video on everything that I do from you know step one to step ten, from downloading the track all the way up to like cleaning up my library before I play at the club. Everything is this is everything that I do. I'll try to get as in depth as possible. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to ask, post them in the comments, or something like that. Um, I'll leave my information up here when the video is over with, so you can co contact me directly. Um, I give you a list of all the programs that I use so you can download them. Most of them are free, some of them are not. Um, I'll give you links to those also in the comments. Um, the programs that I'm going to be using right now, uh, and these are all listed so you guys don't have to worry about writing this down, is uh, I use iTunes to manage my tracks. All my songs are listed in iTunes. I use Scratch Live, I don't use Tractor. Uh, what else? I use Ableton Live. I use version 9, but you can use any version you want to. I use 9. Uh, I use Mixing Key. I use a program called Hazel. Uh, basically, what Hazel does is it runs rules on your computer to move you know, files around from one place to another place. I'll show you guys how I use those. Um, it's pretty dope. I use this program called Total Finder, which is really dope. It's um, basically tabbed browsing for your Finder. So you can open up um, Dropbox here. You can open up like your downloads folder here. You know, I think you can even do something where you can put another another one of these, your favorites on this side to help you organize your tracks and move stuff around a little bit better without having four or five or six windows open up. Um, I use, uh, what else I use? I use Automator for automations and I'll get into that later on about how I use it and how effective it is. I use some Apple scripting, some, some uh, third party scripting and I use a program called Media Bliss which is a new program made by the dudes who make a mix and key. It's pretty dope. It helps me organize my ID3 tags. So you guys might want to look into it. I used a lot of programs before. I like this one. It works for me. It's simple, so that's what I use. All right, so um, the first step in my process is downloading the track, obviously. We have to get new music. So let me load up Safari. Load up my record pool. Now let's get some, uh, let's get some tracks. Um... I'm only going to get a couple of tracks because I already downloaded some earlier today. This is just to show you exactly how everything works. So let's, uh, let's get out of this. Let's get this. Uh, the trampoline track. Now, I always download the clean versions and the dirty versions of the tracks. Because I don't want them to, uh, in case I need one version or another version, sometimes some clubs don't like the dirty version, sometimes clubs don't like the clean version. You know, uh, I want to make sure I have both the versions for whatever reason. I also download the intros and outros, um, not because every track, you know, you don't always need an intro when you're playing the track. Sometimes it's good enough you don't need an intro. But sometimes they have like a heavy bass line in the beginning on the intro outro as opposed to the regular track, which just kind of starts out on the high end. So I get that for whatever sounds right, you know. For the particular type of environment, particular the particular situation, I get that track. So anyway, we're gonna download these two tracks. And now, uh, now one thing you're gonna notice is that once I download tracks, I'm gonna get a little notification right here that should pop up, which is not popping up. Let's see if I can jump start it. Whatever. Anyway, so normally what's supposed to happen, and it's not happening now, is that when I download a new track, so I move these out, move these back in. This program I got called Hazel, which is acting up right now. I don't know why it's acting up. It should take these tracks and drag them into my music folder where these other tracks are. Um, there we go. They just. Oh no, dude. Put them in there. All my tracks get automatically sorted into my music folder by Hazel Baby because I'm taking the video. It's not working the way it should. But um that way I won't have you know this humongous shitty downloads for folder that looks kind of like this one. Everything will be clean and organized and sorted by what it needs to be. So nothing will get lost, you know, as the weeks or the days go by. I always know where everything is at. After I run, after I download my tracks from the record pool, some I get from like Franchise or, or Zip or 
club colors or whatever. He said, I'm done with that, right? Next thing I do is I run this automation called uh, Music Scan. Now, before I run it, I'm going to pull it up. Pull up my automator, open existing project, and uh, my Music Scan. And all automator is is a set of rules that you would normally do yourself, but you can have automated so that you don't have to always do each and everything every time you do it. Um, what this thing does is it asks me if I want to scan my music. Then I could change that to whatever I wanted to, you know, or not. It'll find all any file that's a music file that's located in your downloads folder. Um, it'll make a new folder, new music for, you know, and put in my new music folder, which is right. There's my new music folder right there. And new music for, and then it'll give it the the date, the time, I mean the exact, the exact date I downloaded it, or that, the date I ran it, and the exact time I ran the program. Then it'll take all the music files in the download folder and move them to the trash, and then it'll tell me that it's done. That way if I download like a whole bunch of files, and I just want to sweep my downloads folder for every single uh, music file that I have, it'll just run that, it'll, it'll do it all for me. So let me show you how this, this thing runs. I'll go in here and go to music scan. And I'll ask you if I'm ready. And I'm like, yeah. And give me a little notification that it's done. And if I go in here, it just made this new folder with the date on it, 135. I don't know what that is. This is all screwed up. Anyway, with all the tracks that were supposed to be inside that, that were in that folder. I don't know why things are, these are not being read. I don't know. Um, they're acting weird, but normally it doesn't work that way. I'll just drag these things into here. So here are all the files that I ran that um, it cleaned out of there. Now that works for me, whereas though, um, let's say I'm downloading a couple tracks for today and then I don't add them to my library. Or I do them tomorrow, I don't add those to my library. This will just separate them by date. So I would know where my tracks are that I downloaded on that particular date. I'll get more in depth into that later on, but this is good enough for me right now. Next, um, I'll run Mixed in Key. This is not really that important for hip hop, but you want to make sure you do it for your house music. Now, Mixed in Key is not completely accurate in my opinion, but it gives me a good idea where my track starts for our key, as far as keys go. It also puts the, uh, the BPM in and the tempo. So I always run my Mixed in Key, go to Add Files, and click my new music folder. It'll scan every music file in this folder um, and give me the keys for it. To open it, it's pretty quick. I got an i7 in this computer and I'm running SSD, so there's no, there's not that much lag time. Normally, if I'm doing a large amount of files, I'll set this and like go smoke a cigarette, like go get something to drink or something like that and come back and it'll be done, but it's pretty quick as you can see. So, all right, all what six of those files are done, close that up and that's pretty much everything I do for every file that I download. That's the end of my download process. All these files are prepped up, ready to go, ready to be looked at. You know, if I want to get more in depth into it, I'll go ahead and I'll run my um, Media Bliss and put these files in it. Just to make sure all my uh, tags are correct. Now, one thing I do want to admit, uh, or I do want to point out is uh, a lot of these tags have your ID3 version ones in them. And it's really not good to have them in there because you don't use them in order to kind of screw up, screw up some of your, met, your metadata. So Media Bliss just goes ahead, it takes those things out, you know, automatically, so it selects all your tracks. And removes them, okay. Save changes, boom, bam, those are done. Um, if I don't do any other edits, like I don't want this franchise the website inside my metadata so i'll just go in here go to global replace search for this which will highlight all that stuff and delete that text replace all but it takes all that crap out of it now some people will put like their email addresses or other random information in my tags to kind of screw stuff up and i don't want that in there so that just you know exits it out after i'm done 
I'll go to save my changes. It'll commit all the saves, all the changes I've done to my files and save them to my ID3 tags, close media bliss, and bam, now those files are ready to be imported, right? Now, I don't know how some of you guys do your library. I use iTunes to manage all my tracks. So if you're an iTunes guy like me, this next part might work for you. Um, if not, you know, look more into Hazel. It can do some pretty cool stuff to organize the tracks, however you, you know, you guys do them. So let's pull up iTunes. Now here's my library. Um, I'll get into all these folders in a second. But for right now, the only folder we're going to focus on is the new music folder. So we're going to open this thing up. Now my new music folder is sorted into three different categories. By time, by month, and by date. Now what that means is by date is I'll go ahead and every day that I know I, I download new tracks, add it to my library, I'll make a separate playlist for that particular date. Like today is what? The 10th. So July 10th. And I can sort this thing by year, but I'm not I'm too lazy for that right now. Um, I do this because some days I'll get like a folder or a bunch of tracks from somebody or from some place and I'm gonna make sure those are separate or apart from everything else so they'll get their own folder on that particular day. I can go back and say I remember like on the 15th I downloaded this track or I got these tracks from this dude. Um make sure to look into those. So take the tenth. Let's go in and take our tracks and add them to the library. To load it up. Once those tracks are in there, I have my iTunes settings, um, my import settings, set everything at 320. Let's see. This is what my import settings look like. Um, this is not really that important unless you're converting a file or if you're using a CD to import a file. But besides that, whatever settings the file had prior to you importing them will stay the same. This is all if you're encoding MP3s or importing or like, you know, converting some. So. As far as my um, my advanced settings go, uh, I don't let iTunes organize my stuff. I did it before. It gave me some issues. Um, it works for some, it works for others. I'd rather just not. All iTunes does is copy the music into the media folder. And um, this is what it looks like when iTunes does that. Music, iTunes, iTunes Media, Music. It still keeps it organized by like artists and stuff like that, but it just doesn't go overboard like it would normally, you know. Anyway, that's that. Okay, now that these files are copied to my library, I don't need these anymore. So I'll either just um, gray it out zip it up and save it if I want to make an archive of all the new tracks that I download like zip it up and put it on my uh, external hard drive or that's just a pretty good idea I should start doing that Let me write that down save to external um, or I'll just try to delete them I'm gonna go ahead and just compress these because I might I'm gonna start archiving my stuff so just in case you know Well, that's fine. Just in case you lose your stuff, you know, some dudes have backups of CDs. Um, I don't use CDs, use MP3s. This is a good way to back up your stuff. So um, in case you do have a hard drive crash, you still got incremental backups of each per day. That's one way of doing a backup. It's not the end all be all, it's just one particular way, right? So here are my tracks. The inside iTunes, um, sort of like this. Uh, I pull up one track just to verify the information that I want to be in there is in there. Um, this composer, it didn't have a fill for that media bliss, so I'll just X all those out. My BPM's in there, my grouping's in there, and my key file is in the comments area. Now, key file is also stored in like a key location in Serato that you can't pull up in iTunes. I don't know exactly where it's at, but... Um, I know it's there, so take all these real quick and get rid of that. 
I think the album artwork is enough. Good info. All right, cool. It's all gone. He's done. All right, so that's that's that. Um, aside from sorting them by day, making these manual playlists, I have some automatic playlists um, stored as well. Like here is by month. 2013. Here I have a setting or rule that shows to add every single track that's downloaded or added to the library in this particular month. That's less than 10 minutes for like a podcast or like um some you know piss break or something like that. These are just regular tracks. This is cool for me because you know, being open format DJ, I kind of go through phases. Sometimes I'll do like a house phase for like a couple months, or I go through a hip hop phase. And um I can always remember how I was feeling that particular month. So by doing it this way, I can go back and say, all right, you know, I'm back in April and I was looking into this. What kind of tracks was I downloading in April? All right. Oh, this is cool. You know, it really gets beneficial as the years progress. So like if it's if you've been doing this since 2007, now it's like 2013, you can see the hot tracks you downloaded back in 07. Because you can't always go to like a Billboard's top 100 list and pull the top 100 Billboard tracks from like five years ago and expect to have all the really, really good songs. You know, the good songs kind of li li lie in the, uh, the between area. Like um, you know, this track, Hip Hop Is Dead, it may have been a top track, but maybe not for that long. You'll, you don't want to forget it if you're trying to do like a, a throwback set or something like that. But anyway, so here's all the tracks I added in for July, for June, or for whatever. Um, and this last one is By Time. Which is basically, I think this is the most important folder for me. This is in the last 24 hours. That shouldn't be there. So let me just edit this real quick. Length. What time is time here? Time is not greater than, let's say, 10 minutes. Oh. It's less than 10 minutes. There we go. So this folder is the most important folder to me because this is the folder that I pay attention to the most. Now, for the guys who do run iTunes, you know, who have like an iPhone or iPod or something like that, this is really beneficial beneficial for you to re review tracks. Um, I got like a little one of those iPod classics, those big 160 gig iPod classics, and I got my iPhone. If I'm in a car on the way to a gig or coming back from work or even at the gym, I'll listen to my library, listen to the new tracks that I download, and um, I'll rate them when they come in. As soon as I can, if I hear a track, oh, I like this, I like this drop, I like this build up, let me rate this track real quick, just so that when I come back to it, when it's time to gig, I can know exactly how I feel about that track. You know, when you're more one genre, in my opinion, it's easy to remember what track is what. But when you're more open format, you can't, you got to like, you know, fire and forget, you know, all right, this track is tight, cool, whatever. Now let's go to the next track. You can't always remember every specific detail. I sort of by um, last 24 hours, last two weeks, and last 30 days. Um, this helps me out because if I download a couple tracks real quick and I got to go off to the gym, I know at the gym I can review what I just downloaded in the past 24 hours. Or um, if I'm in a car on the way to a gig, I can see what's the last two weeks worth of tight, get tight tracks that I downloaded that I want to play at this particular spot. My current or my new tracks, you know, same thing for the last 30 days. Um, all these get synced to my iPod, ship synced to yours. It's a good way to review tracks. Another, uh, the next part is my, um, my rating process, right? Uh... So I need to go through this, mix that is, maybe iPod only, that's sort of randoms. Oh yeah, some tracks, you know, I would want to fix in Ableton, like uh, like this track by, um, this fucking problems track. It's a short, it only has Kendrick's part, but then I have like a, a remix with Tiger in it that I might want to just mash up into one track, so I want to always switch that, switch it over when I, when I blend it in. So I'll mark these things fixed for Ableton, I'll go back and I'll fix it. But um, yeah, that's that. Now we're gonna go into the rating portion. You can't really in depth, in depthly rate tracks on the fly. You know, iTunes gives you that star rating, like you know, one star to five star rating. When I'm, when I don't have the chance to sit there and like write out like a review on it, or like really, really get into it, I'll just rate them. You know, I'll rate like five stars for like a, a guaranteed hit. Maybe four stars for like something that I would use, not at peak hour, but like right before and right after peak hour. 
um, three stars for like a chill track, like a, a nice build up. It was not hot right now, but it was hot like in yesteryear. So people would still like tap their feet to it and dance to it. You know, two star track, two star for like tracks that are openers, something I play in the beginning of the night, and a uh, one star for tracks that I don't like that I'm going to delete out of my library. I go over here to rating and I'll I put these I'll put them in there just to uh let me look at them later on. Now after I look at them after I, I think they're good, I'll go ahead and I remove these ratings and give it room for other tracks. But this will let me when I sit down in my library, a lot of that when I sit down in my library, I can just like all right, let me just pull up my rates for the day. Let me see my five stars. What am I gonna play tonight? This helps me like get ready for my set. You know? So that's how I rate my tracks inside iTunes. What else we got? Um, after I do all this type of stuff, um, as far as iTunes go, I'm done. I don't need to mess around with iTunes anymore. My tracks are in my library. The ID new tags are correct. I made a little quick little edit to them. They're straight. Um, I'm ready to go into Serato. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing. If I want to track out of my library, I'll uncheck the option. I'll uncheck this little check mark. It's going down, right? And then I'll go back and I'll sort by checks. And whatever's, whatever track is unchecked, I'll delete them. Like, I don't need these tracks anymore. The last thing I want is to clutter my library with unwanted, unneeded tracks. I used to have... This humongous library, this two terabyte library, and I thought it was like pretty badass to have all these tracks, but I got lost trying to find certain songs. So now I only keep a song that I know for sure that I'm one percent gonna play. And if I know if I don't know I'm not gonna play it, I get it out of my library. Like that's it, you know. But anyway, that's everything I do in iTunes. Um for now at least. So I'm gonna go ahead and close iTunes. And now I'm gonna open up Scratch Live. Now my Scratch Live process is a little simpler. Um, one thing I want to point out to you guys who do run iTunes with Scratch Live, um, iTunes will read your ID3 tags, how you change the track, but it does not read, if you if you have your Serato set up to read the iTunes library, it won't read the ID3, the, the, the tags directly. It'll read your, your iTunes, It'll read this thing. This file right here. I think it's this file right here. Or this file right here, your, your, your library file. That's what it's getting your tags from, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but it's, it reads one of these uh, iTunes library files and it pulls the tag information from your iTunes library. So if iTunes is not seeing the tags the way you want to see it, Toronto's not going to see the tags that you want to see until you load up the track specifically. But just like looking at it this way, it's really not gonna show you everything unless it's refreshed or iTunes tell it tells it what to see, right? Um, now we're in Serato. Now before I go into how my crates are set up, I'm gonna go back into my live my, my iTunes organization and how I rate tracks after this. Um, I'll go through here and I'll pull in new music by a particular date, and we're gonna start with the month. Right, because I was I was working on last month, and these are all the tracks I downloaded last month. Now I'll come in through this way through Serato, and I'll sort, rate, and organize and queue up my tracks here. I may do this on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday, or like earlier on in the week, or even like a Sunday, uh, to get ready for the next week. So I'll find, I'll pull up a track. Let's see what we did this this week. I'll pull up a track. First thing I'll do is I'll sort by key and I'll see whatever tracks don't have the keys in them or incorrect keys I'll go ahead and analyze them real quick let me see that okay cool I'll go ahead and analyze all my tracks that need the keys added to them this is just a familiar familiarized Serato with the particular tracks and to make sure they have the most up-to-date um, tag information. You know, I have a course, I, uh, uh, i7 processor, so 
that's why it's running so many tracks that once some of you guys have like a core 2 dual processor you only see two of these you know it, this analyzing feature works as well as works as strong as your processor is so depending on how strong your processor is how fast this process will work it works pretty pretty quickly like almost as quick as the um the mixing key analyzing goes so it's a good benefit to to upgrade your laptop if you haven't already if you do for upgrade while that's doing that another thing i want to show you guys is uh my current configuration on my computer is i have 16 gigs of memory and as far as my hard drives go i have 500 gig hard drives stored in a raid configuration i gotta figure out what the hell this shit is but it's stored in a raid configuration which basically means like if i pull up my disk utility Two Vertex 4 SSDs rated together to get one 511 gigabyte storage. Basically, the, the strike rate configuration. I mean, you can Google it. I don't want to get into it, but it makes my computer run extremely fast. That plus my SSDs, and you know, I, there's really no point to rate up two SSDs together unless you're like ven rendering video. You just want like a stupid fast computer. I don't really like waiting for things to happen on my computer because I do so much. So I got it. Uh, I ran it like that. If you want to see my speed, I got this program called Black Magic Disk Speed Test. You can get it off the App Store. It basically tests your hard drive against all these different standards to see just how fast your hard drives are. That's my read write speed. Um, to me, that's beneficial, and for some of you video DJs out there, that may be beneficial to you. Um, reading and writing at 800 megabytes a second is really, really, really dope. When um, you you mix the video, mix the videos in, you don't want any lag, you don't want any mess up, especially if you're doing HD video. So this might be something you want to look into. You know, here's some more standards. You can pause the video if you want to look more deeply into that. But you know, that's that. Let's go back. To this, yep, and they're, they're all done now. So once all these tags, I didn't get these done. Anyway, once all these tags are done, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start reviewing them or prepping them up for for my next gig. So the first thing I'm gonna do is load up a track, and because I have the bridge installed, because I use Ableton, I'm able to bridge. I get a beat grid, which you see up here. The beat grid, the beat, the beat grid is pretty dope for me. I like using it. You know, I don't really have any specific reason for why I'm using it, but as far as like catching up on beats, seeing how far I am, um, if I'm doing like a what do you call it, like flipping doubles, I need to hurry up and jump to the part in the track that I that I'm at in the other track. Knowing what number I'm at works out for me. You guys can use it whatever way you want to use it, um, but that's where that number is. The beat grid is. Um, when I set my cue points up, I always put the cue point on the first beat. Like that, I always put it on the fourth beat or right before, right in between the first beat and the drop, in case I need to bring it, bring back the tra track, bring the track back in, or if I'm dropping the track, I want to drop it on the one, but I missed the one because somebody like tapped me on my shoulder, some bullshit like that. I can come back and I can drop it on the five and still get a nice smooth blend in without worrying about waiting for the next, you know, the next chorus to hit to, to mix this track in. So to me, this is always useful. I've been in a couple of situations where I needed this, and I put it in there. So I made sure I had it from that point forward. So one to five, what's after that? The nine. So we're gonna go ahead and pull one at the nine. Now, if I wanna get really, really in depth with it, I'll go ahead and I'll review the rest of the track and see what else I need to put in there. Sometimes I don't need to put it at the one, the five, and the nine. Um, I could put it like someplace in here for like a really big drop, big drop. Somewhere around there if I need to, you know, it all depends on your preference. But um that's how I queue up my tracks and how I um I manage my B grids. Another thing to kind of point out, some of you guys, when you load up your B grids, you'll have like a if I can find this track like that. Something like this. So 
according to the B grade, your one is way the fuck over here. But if you listen to your track, your one is really right here. How do you get? How do you move that over from here to here? Well, you go into your beat grid, you go over to the one, whatever you want to put it at. You click your beat grid edit. Like that, you hold down your option key, and you drag this one where you need it to go. Oh, this thing's acting up for me. It's another way you do it, I guess. But hey, look it up on Serato. I'll post a link down there. You guys can read it and get whatever interpretation you want out of it. Um, I don't know why this thing's acting stupid all of a sudden. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, doing it this way, the way I'm doing it right now, as you can see, the, the numbers are getting closer together. That's shrinking your B-grid and essentially speeding up your BPM. Don't do that unless you know what you're doing. But um, I'll post a link up to Serato's official page that they explain it to you so you can do it correctly but anyway once you um go ahead and you got your b grids together you got your cue points together um the next thing i'm going to go ahead and do is talk about reading the tracks with these little dots over here a lot of you guys don't use them some of you guys do use them um serato's smart crate feature is not as in depth as i would like it so I'm trying to find the best way to rate my tracks and find what I need as quickly and as easily as possible. Um, so I spend more time playing the music and less time looking for them. So these are the colors that you get. There's what, six, 18 or some shit like that. I don't know, I can't add. <laughs> um, these are the colors you get to uh, label your tracks. Um, some of you guys have your own system. Um, here's my system. That's how I label my uh, my tracks in Serato. You can go ahead and pause this. Um, for the guys who are in my Dropbox in the cage, you guys can uh, pull us out of the Dropbox file is in there. For the guys who are not, I'll post up a link to the video. I'll post up a link of this file on the video. Or you can just pause and do a screenshot of whatever you want. This is a good way I figured out of managing my tracks without I'm reading the tracks in, in, in Serato, I don't always have to listen to the track and know exactly what the track is. I can just rate it on like an off day and I'm playing in the club, just go by the color and um, play play that way, All right? Um, I'll explain each one. Um, to me, a breaker, these, these are the tracks I'm gonna play at like, if the club closes at two at midnight is like the hour, like the midnight track. These are those tracks, like the best track that you have for that particular moment in your library, or for for that the night for that particular night, these are those tracks. Then you got your peak hour tracks. This is like from from twelve thirty up until like one thirty or two thirty, or no, or that that peak hour. You know what the peak hour is. Um, my heavy builder tracks. These are the tracks I'd played prior to the peak hour. So like from my uh, ten thirty to eleven thirty, eleven forty five. These are the tracks I'd play. Some of these tracks are like was hot right now, but now it was extremely hot. Maybe it was hot yesterday, or um, what's what will be hot in the future, or, or just came like, came came out of being on the top spot. This will go from like a a ten thirty to eleven forty five, or maybe for like I don't know, for like a from eleven to eleven forty five, or maybe from twelve thirty up until like a one thirty. These are where you put those tracks at, and you rate them. I, I gave it three options as all of them, so you can some. Builders are better than others. That just gives you that category. Light builders, I put in. These are the tracks I play that are still popular, but it's not that track. You know, if you play the light builders and you're op your opener DJ, the closer or the headliner DJ won't get pissed off because you played them, but the, he'll be happy that everyone is still dancing. Right? That's what those tracks are to me. Uh, my warm openers. This is right before or right after I'd say open up the club. Once people kind of get a feel of the, your, your style, this is just to keep things light, keep things kind of friendly. Um, I play this like around happy hour or a little bit after happy hour. Like people um, are kind of getting in the mood sort of, but are still talking. My cold openers and my starters, these are the tracks that I start out with. Like when I first start, my first track that I play, I know for a fact I'm not going to play this track on peak hour. I'm not going to play this track. 
1130. This is a track that people want to hear when I first start playing. For the hip-hop spots, this is more like a lyrical track. For the house spots, this is more like a, a smooth house track. You know what I mean? Like tracks that are catchy, that people can follow along with, but not pay too much attention to. You know? Um, then I have my closers and my enders. A closer track is a track that I'm going to play like, all right, dude, you know, the club closes at 2. It's 1.15 to 1.30. We about to call last call. These are the tracks I'm going to play to kind of calm everybody down from the rest of the night. So essentially, you would say that these kind of go after this up here. Ish. Right? And then you have your enders. These are like my last songs of the night. Like, um... Say Yes by Flow It Trio. Like, those really, 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 like, you can't come back from these tracks. Once you hit this level, you're not coming back. That's it. Right? The night is over with. The lights are on. People try to get out. Security's push people out. That's what my under tracks are. Um, white is not sorted. Obviously, every track comes in originally white, so I don't label that anything. Um, gray is maybe the lead. These are tracks that I'm not really feeling just yet, but I'm not too ready to give up on it. So I, I mark it with a gray to kind of like, yo, watch out for it. If you don't play this next couple days, um, or if you don't get a response out of it, go ahead and Mark it with the dark gray, which is trash. Or black, you can say, which is trash. So save this, you know, uh, make your own. This is how I do mine. It's just it's working out for me for quite a while. I'm going to continue to use this. <clears throat> anyway, now let's see how that, that works out. I'll go in here. Let's see. I'll go ahead and give a track like this. Obviously, Pour It Up is a pretty popular track right now. And this is a reggae version. It's a dancehall version. So what would I rate it? Um, I'll put it right around here. Mm, around, that's good, you know. People want to hear that track. Shorties will like get up and dance, you know. It's something pretty popular, you know. But it's up to you. You rate things however you want to rate things based on, you know, how you want to rate them. Um, I haven't really done my July folder just yet. You know, I do this when I have time, but I've kind of touched on my June folder, as you can see. Little dots here and there. Um, once you're done, you can sort by the dots. And boom. So you can go ahead and, all right, you know, it's that time of night. Let me play some of this. There we go. Now it's working the way I want it to work. Right? Early in the night, this is how I do it. Now, you don't have to do this. If you don't want to rate a track just yet, you can leave it how it is. Don't. Um, I'm pretty sure these ratings will change as the time changes. But when you're mixing me at the club, this definitely comes in handy, um, at least for me, it might for you, some guys use, some guys love it, some guys hate it. They don't, you know, it's all up to your personal preference. Um, the next thing that I do, um, something that I came up with, I don't know who, how many other guys do this, but I think it's pretty useful is, um, is hashtagging. I know it sounds stupid, but, uh, basically what hashtagging in my straw library does is it, it gives me a way to sort my library even further. So, for example, let's just say it's 11 o'clock, you know, I'm playing tracks, everybody's happy. Um, people asking for some, some, some New York, some East Coast music. I don't really know what to put on right now. I'm like, fuck, you know, what's some East Coast music? Instead of going through and searching my library for like, you know, Biggie or fucking this guy or that guy, I'm going to just go type in here, hashtag East Coast. And all the tracks over here that I, I label with hashtag East Coast will pop up. Boom. You know, these are good. These are, is a good way to um, just add a, an additional dynamic to your songs, and you can do this with anything. Like I, I put these into my comments folders. I could put like um, hashtag twerk, and these are track shows you might want to fucking twerk to. You know, or do some fucking shit to whatever. But um, here's a couple of my hashtags. Some transition tracks. Somebody looking for a transition, you can go like, all right, I want a transition. Plus, uh, New York, East, up. Oh, I don't got any of those. Twerk. Nope, oh, well, I'm masked out. How about, like, um, a twerk track that's from New York? Bam, there we go. Twerk New York track.
boom, you know? That's it's a really, really good way to better categorize your tracks, especially if you're like you're not in the right mind when you're playing or you know something's going on you just need to find something real quick you need some pretty cool ideas it's kind of you helping out yourself from i guess your prep time here's a, a folder i made with all my uh my hashtags some birthday tracks you know closers um places my fmls are like a forget me not it's like tracks that i know i always forget but um like I, I'll be um, I'll be in a club like oh I know this song but I don't know the name of it what's the name of that track I always forget it while well, I tag it forget me not so what well, FM, FMNs so I always t type that in if I need to find that song or songs like it um, some love tracks when you got like couples or whatever some ratchet tracks You know, and, and the list goes on, you know, for whatever you want to, whatever you want to do with it. Some of the scratch appellas are songs like acapellas of tracks that I liked. I normally scratch it over like another instrumental. Um, and I constantly use these tracks. They have like a really, really cool beat to it, a really, a really cool sound to it. I do that like, um, this one track I did, uh. No, that's not. There we go. We are young. This track goes good over Tipsy. The Tipsy beat. So I'll just go over my comments. And I'll put a... Scratch. Scratch Appella. Right? And um, they work. They're cool. So like if I'm in a club real quick and I'm playing this track, as long as we just scratch real quick or, you know, play around, cut something up, I'll just type in hashtag scratch. And all the tracks that I scratched, like I got my scratch tools here, my eyes, my fresh hands, my oh yeah. Let me get this in here. So this is a, a scratch that I normally use, you know, some other tracks, some scratch appellas that I normally use are also in here. Why do I got two of the same tracks in? All right, this is queued up. So this one, let's go on. See, like I found out I don't like it, mark it black. I'll go back to it later on when I got time and I'll delete it out of my library. So that's a cool way to use hashtags to better sort, better find tracks in your library. Another cool thing I do is like um song, song correlation. So like um if I have one particular song that sounds good with another song, um I'll add that song in a comment section of the previous song. So for example, um Children's Story. If you see, I typed in children's story, but then this is how you do it popped up. Be faithful popped up. Poison popped up. How do these tracks pop up if I don't have, if it has nothing to do with children's story? Well, simple. If you go into my comments, I have these little edits in here. So, to me, I'm like, all right, bet. You know, if I'm playing children's story, I know that right after that, I might drop in, um, this is how we do it. Or and after that, I might fucking drop in um, this little party break real quick. I might throw in poison after that. Maybe like a combo that I normally use. Instead of typing in each song and put in prepare, each song put in prepare, I just type in one track and it all pop up. You know? I think I even did something with like a, what do you call it? So, I'm different, right? I'm different sounds similar to um I do it for the ratchet. So I just put it in inside the comments. And I go into here. Take that, copy that. Go into the I'm different. To E strikes. And I go into what well, you know what? Can't do that. And I'll just add this track and I'll put like a little um these brackets in between them so I won't mess it up when I'm searching for them. So 
So now every time I'm looking for that track, it'll pop up. You know, I don't use my comments for nothing else. I don't know who does use their comments for things, but. It's a cool way to use those tracks. Excuse me, cool way to use those comment sections of the tracks. Um, so let me see what we went over. We went over hashtagging, um, song correlation, um, cues, the beat grids, analyzing your tracks, all that type of stuff. All right, bet. So that is at least organizing the library. Um, you can go in this folder, like your June folder, your July folder, when you have time, and then sort this in your crates. These are my crates. Um, this is a really condensed version of my crates. Like I said before, I had like a really, really humongous library and I had to condense it because I couldn't find what I was looking for. So these are the crates that I have now. I used to have, I, I would have rather a better system um, if Serato gave us more tools as far as their smart crate feature. And the way it stands right now, we can't put smart crates inside of smart crates. We kind of, you know, makes things kind of shitty. We can't put rules on type of existing folders. So like if I had like a folder for, you know, my tools, I put a smart crate folder on a, a rule on top of that that says if this tool hasn't been used in like the past two weeks, you know, move it out of this folder. And that may work for tracks like current hits. Like if I haven't played this track in the past six months, move it out of current hit my current hits folder. You know, since Serato's folder structure is kind of limited, you know, I it's all manual from this point forward. So I'm gonna go briefly into my crate structure. Um, it's not where, the way I want it to right now. It's not as perfect as it should be, but I'll just show you what, you, what I got so far. Um, this is my trash folder, first off. and my trash folder, I'll sort by color and all the tracks that are black. I'll put them in my trash folder. Let me delete those tracks that are on and also tracks that are not showing up in iTunes. These tracks. Obviously, they're not there anymore. So I'll just take them, delete those out. I deleted those out of my iTunes library anyway, so they wouldn't be in my library first place. Um, another track that I got that I haven't really messed around with yet is my 2014 New Year's Eve prep track. Um, as we all know, um, as the year goes on, I don't know how many of you guys do it. I ran into this problem last New Year's where I actually had to go back and scrub my entire library for all the top tracks of 2012. So when I play them on the music, I have them ready for, for me. This way, if I do it this way, every time a really, really tight track comes out that I really enjoy, I'll just go ahead and I'll drop it into this folder and leave it there so that when December comes, I already have this crate full of like fantastic tracks without having to search too much for it. I'm kind of like building up a playlist for the future. Um, this sort SAP track are tracks that I need to put where they need to go as soon as possible. Like These are tracks that have not been sorted yet. The way I figure it, most guys, they kind of live in their crates as opposed to living in their all folder. So if a song that you want to play is not in your crates, people normally don't get to it as often. These are tracks that I make sure I want to get to, make sure I want to analyze tracks that I know need to go someplace, but I haven't got a chance to put them in there just yet. Um, party Breaks is Party Breaks. You know, I haven't really messed around with that too much. My tools, as you can see, is all screwed up. I haven't touched it at all. But stuff like uh, Drops. Like I have my custom drops that I've like ordered or had those made for me. Or I'll have my uh my generic drops. These are tracks, these are drops that will have my name in them, but um have a spot for me to drop my name at the end of the at the end of the track. Um I have my loops. Stuff like that. I got my SP sample player. I can't pull it up now because my Serato is not attached. I'll pull up in a second, you know, if I can get my I got my, my Serato box is someplace around here. But um these are tracks that I'm loading my SP sample player. Little effects, little crowd noise effect, some uh things like that. Um, my piss breaks, these are tracks that are like longer tracks, but need to go outside real quick, smoke a cigarette or I'm not, a, if I'm not there, these are just some tracks that I loaded up that are pre-mixed already for like 10 minutes or like eight minutes, something like that. So I can at least get away and not worry about the music stopping. Um, some sound effects, your air horn, explosion, stuff like that. Um, my regular samples. 
You know, shout out to Aiden and Scott for making this East Coast party folder. You know, I still use all the tracks from that. That was pretty dope. He made that for us. If you guys don't got to hit up Aiden and Scott, you know, he's all over the internet. Um, just random tools, random samples that we use throughout our parties. Um, I put them in this folder. Then I got my scratch folder, which, you know, is kind of more personal for me. Because I'm not going to pull out and, you know, drop down a break beat in the middle of a middle of a party and just start scratching my ass off. Like, I can't scratch to save my life. This is just for me to practice them at the house and keep stuff organized. Um, certain sentences that I like, you know, some jokes. Like, a lot. I don't know if you guys do this or not. To me, I find it pretty, I get a good crowd reaction from it. If a song, if a, if a track, if a... If a video on YouTube is like really, really popular, it's going viral, I'll pull an MP3 from that video and I'll use that as a, as a scratch sentence. Like, um, that ain't nobody got time for that Sweet Brown video came in, you know, people really dig, you know, was digging that, um, when I scratched that into certain things, you know, people got a good laugh at that little, something to grab people's attention. You know, this, oh my God, who the hell cares from, you know, Stewie Griffin or something like that. And I'll, I'll play that if somebody requests a song like, yo, the crowd wants to hear it right now. And I'll drop that and be like, yo, dude, nobody gives a fuck. Um, or even this one. It's pretty cool stuff. Just keep things interesting. Keep things fresh. Um, some break beats or some. Instrumentals of tracks I want to practice over. Go in there. Um, this wasn't supposed to go in a scratch. So these just freestyle before like a little party I did. Anyway, um, shortcuts like albums that I'm working on, I guess mixtapes that I'm working on, I'll put them in there and organize it that way. My club crates. This is a... I actually saw another DJ do this. What he did was... I don't know if he pulled his, his history file or what he did, but I guess he was a resident of this particular club. And he would sit there... And um, every month, he'd pull his history file out and put it in a crate and be like, these are the tracks I played at this particular club this particular month. And I didn't know how it was useful just yet. I still don't know exactly how they do it, how, how he uses it, but it seemed like something that was willing to explore. So I started doing it and see, you know, how I could take it from there. My review folder is the same exact thing as my new music by date folder. Just... Crate wise, there's no real difference from there. This, I guess, that folder was there prior to me implementing the iTunes system. And then you got my press play folder. Now, this is where all my crates live at. So I open this up and I expand it. And I got my Forget Me Nots, my FMNs. I told you before. Uh, my power sets is something you guys call my like combos, like little combo sets that'll work real quick or stuff like that. Um, then my mainstream folder, which is basically like what you guys consider house or top 40, rather. I'm going to go into that because that folder is all kinds of trash right now. Um, my Latin folder, you see how extensive that is. Um, and then let, let's, let's focus on my, my urban folder because that's where I've been doing most of my work at. Now, if you see right here, this shouldn't be hanging out like that. But you see right here how I've been raiding my tracks as I go along. This will really help me out if I'm in the club at a party and I'm in the middle of a set and I need a track to play. I can pull this thing up and see, all right, dude, you're like about 11.30 right now. You might have played something from around this area. Boom. And it works out. You know, sometimes I'll rate a track when I'm at home. Sometimes I'll be in a club at a party and as I play that track, I'm like, oh, this track sounds pretty good. Let me rate it real quick. And I'll rate it there. And I'll just select my urban folder and it's all sorted for me. So it takes the guesswork and uh, the memorization out of playing. You set yourself up for success later on. So you spend more time playing the music and less time looking for the music. Um, the way my individual folders look, I have my classics, which I break down into like a timeless classes with like particular artists that uh, have really good timeless tracks. Um, classic 90s, classic 80s. Um, my hip hop folder which is my core for like the folder I go for my hip hop tracks that I want to try out that I'm not too sure will will hit the club yet. New hip hop that I just 
maybe just came out within the past two weeks. I'm kind of still trying to see if people are digging it or not or what they how they feel about it. I'm still filling those out. Um, my current hits folder. These are tracks that I know will hit. These are tracks I know right now if I play it at a party, people will people will want to hear it. These are, I guess this would be my peak hour folder if you want to call it anything. Um, and none of this stuff is definite. You know, tracks play around. Tracks change all the time. Like this one was added back in January. You know, it may not be current anymore, but it lives in this folder until it gets moved out of it. Uh, my yesterday folder. These are tracks that are not as, they're not current, but they're still popular. Like Dance. People still dig this track, but it's not a current track anymore. You know, this track came out like a, a hot minute ago. So they go into my, my yesterday folder. Now, eventually tracks go from current to yesterday to eventually out to wherever the fuck they go from there. Um... Another crate that I haven't made just yet is a, a recurrent folder, a recurrent crate. And a recurrent f crate is to uh, basically tracks that are like were popular back in the day and now are popping back up again. Maybe some P. Diddy or Puff Daddy tracks that, you know, maybe some Black Rod. People haven't heard in a while and they're not classics, but, you know, oh, you know, I heard that track in a minute, like Pump It Up by Joe Buzz or something like that. Like tracks people haven't heard in a while, but probably be excited to hear. I know Club Killers has... A folder called recurrent you know and i got the idea from that folder i thought you know i maybe i could implement it here and you know it, it works out um a lot of my crate organization i got from record pools because i find my music through them is only you know smart that i keep that same process that same organizational structure in my own library my party breaks a lot of these folders have been replaced with the hashtagging there's no need to have a party breaks folder if i can have a party breaks hashtag um, I might replace this with like a smart crate that says smart crate, uh, hashtag party breaks. Um, opener tracks, these are like my bluer tracks that I'm not going to play peak hour. I don't have to explain to you what opener tracks are. Um, classics. A lot of these tracks shouldn't be here. I think a lot of these tracks got messed up and confused with my opener and my hood classics folder. So I have my transition transition crate. Which is my up to down, so from high BPM to a lower BPM, um, down to up. Um, one particular track that had a whole bunch of transitions to go into other tracks. I got this off of um, Crack for DJs. It's pretty dope. I like them. And then all the rest of these, I don't even really pay attention to. They're just kind of sitting there. The playlist is like maybe I had one really, really badass set one night. And I'm going to make sure I hold it, held on to it for the next part just to get ideas from it. Like I was on a roll. I was drunk or something. I, I was in it. So I just saved them. Or for maybe future to put them into like a combo set or to refine them and get them ready for the next party. Um, my uh, That's my hip-hop crate. Uh, my R&B crate kind of is a mini version of the same hip-hop crate. Currents, openers, yesterday tracks, classics, some up-tempo stuff. You know, old but gold track. I got this folder from DJ Mebby. It was a pretty cool dude. Look him out. Look look him up. DJMebby.com. A lot of you newer DJs looking to build your library. He's a good place to start. So check him out. Um, and the night tracks are closers. Stuff can go in here. Stuff I only play like when the party's done. And then I have my, my Be More crate, which is, eh, needs a whole lot of help. It's not as diverse as my hip hop crate is. And that's, you know, that crazy even as, as, as good as it should be. My reggae crate. My reggae have my chill tracks. And then I have my dance hall tracks. Um, timeless tracks. These are rhythms that will never go away. Dudes will listen to these things for like the next 10, 15, 20 years. They love these tracks. And then you got what's hot right now, like special rhythms that I like to play currently. Like I guess my current rhythm track. Now, reggae, at least in D.C., it doesn't really change. It's not that requested, so these folders are getting kind of old. Like, nobody holds it. It's not nowhere near hot anymore, but reggae is kind of falling off in the city, I guess, in certain spots anyway. More, more mainstream, not as mainstream. Um, these are like a little Roy folder that I have that's set up. Chill tracks, like I said, like Drop Leaf or something like that. That are not so dance hallish, but it's like your ender, your ender reggae. And, um, you know, a Red Bull set, my, I don't think I went into that just yet, some trap music, 
and then you know so on and so forth. But that's basically my my crate structure. Um, here's a little smart um, smart folder for smart crate for my hashtags, so I can better refine them and find other things to put in, make sure they they are the way they should be. Just grouping off. Now, um, that's basically how I manage my, my Scratch Live. Um, you guys may do it differently. You may do it the same. I hope you guys pull some ideas out of it. Um, one thing I want to make sure you guys remember is when you make it, if you run an iTunes, if you have an iTunes manager library, sometimes you run into the problem where you will make a change. Let's, let's make a change. Let's go to a... Not that track. I want to look into that track more. Uh, anyway, sometimes you make a track, you make an edit. Let's look at this one. Cool. Name and test. And I'll make an edit. Let's say I'll go into my, my comments. And I'll go into test, test. Right? Those are my test, test, and my comments. Now, as soon as I made that edit, as you can see right down here, once I press enter, where did it go? When I load up the next track, look down, if you look down here, it'll write the... Um, the ID3 tags from the previous track. So according to the tags, this track is not up to date. Now let's go into iTunes. Let's close this out. Let's go into iTunes and pull that same track up. And it was on the billboards top something something. Um, here it is. This is the track right here. So why hasn't the comments upgraded, up, updated, right? Uh, before I even go deeper into this, I'm gonna show you something. Now that I, I just made that change in Scratch Live, closed Scratch Live, reopened up Scratch Live, you would think that oh well, Scratch Live knows those, those edits, so it should have saved them, right? Didn't save them at all. So now if I search for test, 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 I'll um. Better flow is not going to show up. So now I'm like, well, what the fuck happened to my tags? Now if I go here and I play that track, as soon as I load it up, then my uh, comments just popped up out of nowhere because it read it. Now the reason why this happens is because Serato does not read the ID track, ID3 track information to manage the library. It reads the iTunes library configuration file. So that configuration file needs to be updated prior to you pulling up scratch live to make sure all your tags are refreshed you dig so let's close this out i think even if i pull it up now again it still wouldn't have committed okay committed now but uh let's change it to test three all right close that Go in here, close this, go back and scratch live, open it up. Um, and the speed it takes to, open, to load up my scratch live and to close it down is all thanks to my, uh, the SSDs. So if you guys don't have them and you're thinking about upgrading, you might want to go ahead and, and upgrade. It does pop up. Anyway, it's finicky. So I'm going to show you a trick that I found to... Make sure stuff that that doesn't happen. So it's going to uh, better off alone right here, and this is off the billboard right here, right? So that should pop up right here. As soon as I go to get information, it just changed. What happened is as soon as I ask iTunes like, "Yo, tell me about this track." Is now pulling information from the actual ID3 tag as opposed to the iTunes library file. You, you, I hope you understand that. Like I don't know how to better explain that. 
get rid of that. Um, the problem a lot of people run into is like, all right, dude, I just made a bunch of changes into my library. How do I go ahead and just refresh all the songs into my library? Well, back in the day, you used to be able to just um, select all the tracks at once and go to get information and press OK, and it refreshes it. Nowadays, iTunes doesn't even do that. So how do you go ahead and make sure your tracks are refreshed? I came across this, um, the way I do it is uh, I searched online, I looked for it, looked it up, took, it took me about a couple days, but I finally came across a script that basically tells the iTunes library to relook at all the ID3, the ID3 tags in, for all your songs and refresh them to make sure it displays the most current information. Um, file select all, click this, and refresh selected tags. Now, the script for the guys who are in the box, it's in the box. The guys who are not in the box, I post a link to the particular script. Um, it's pretty simple to install. It's only took me a second or two. Once the thing is installed, you select this, and it basically tells iTunes to go back, look at every single tracking library, and make sure the tags are 100% up to date with the most latest information. Before I play at a gig, I make sure I run this little script to make sure that all the changes I made in Serato that I'm playing are committed and are are good to go. So um, again, I'll post links up to this in the description. Um, if you have any questions, you can hit me up. You can ask me questions about how I do this process. Um, it takes a little bit sometimes. Sometimes, depending on the size of your library, like I only got 4,040 tracks in this library. So as you can see how long it's take, it takes a couple minutes to, to um, get this thing refreshed. So you guys can skip ahead if you need to. Um, I'll post up a little, I'll let you know that it's done when it's done. All right, um, you're done. So let the tracks have been freshened up. Um, press OK. Now every change that I put into Scratch Live is now reflected inside. Like all my little hashtags I put in there, all my little um, song correlations are all inside of there. Everything is now committed, refreshed, and saved to my iTunes uh, library file. This is really good to keep. Keep doing this thing on a regular basis. Make sure your library stays as up to date as possible. Um, all right, that's that's iTunes. That's how this now. This is I do all this stuff right before a gig. This whole process I just went through is from Sunday to Thursday. Um, right before any gig that I play. Now, now that that's done, now we're gonna talk about right before the gig, right before the gig. All right, it's Friday night. I'm about to go go spin. Um, What's the next process that I do? Well, 
I'm going to pull up my automator first and show you guys a workflow that I created called um, DJ Mode. Pretty simple workflow. Um, all it does is, and all automator is, is just basically like a set of instructions you can set automatically to tell the computer what to do. There's a lot of tutorials on them. I'll post my two automations for the guys in the Dropbox and the Dropbox. If you're not, I'll post some links in the description. Um, but DJ Mode is... It'll tell me to finish what I'm doing, like save my all my files I'm working on for working on something in Photoshop or, you know, about to post something, save everything I'm gonna do and then turn off my Wi-Fi. Once that's done, it'll quit all it'll quit my Dropbox and it'll quit all my applications. So I can ensure nothing is running in the background when I'm playing. I'm gonna make sure nothing is running, nothing is moving around to make sure I get no lag in my Serato. Now, I'm not gonna get any lag. My particular system is so, you know. It's fast enough where I can run Photoshop in the background in Serato. But for some of you guys, you know, make sure that you don't have any additional programs running in the back because you might get a lag. You might get like a, you might freeze on you and that's not what you want. Um, after that, I tell, I tell it to find my Serato folder and my Serato backup folder. So let's go take a, let's take a look at those two folders. Um, maybe my music and Serato, Serato backup, these two folders. It'll take those two folders, then it'll create an archive of those two folders. It'll take that archive, it'll add the date to them, and after that, the date to them, it'll save them in my uh, in my Serato backup folder. Now, I don't know where you guys save your backups, your automated backups. I save all my backups in my Dropbox. For the simple fact is though, God forbid my computer crashes, I lose everything. I want to leave the backup of my core information on the cloud automatically. Um, once I run this backup, even though I closed my Dropbox, when I started this little whole DJ mode thing, next time I turn my computer on and reopen up my Dropbox, it'll sync up and it'll put the latest backup on the internet. So, you know, it, it, it does that. I mean, maybe I can move this down to right around here. But anyway, after it does all that, after backs up all my files, I'll go ahead, I'll ask for confirmation. I have like these little rules, you know, make me impressionable, don't suck, record my set, you know, just little stuff to remind myself to get ready for my gig and then to launch Scratch Live. So let's go ahead and run this real quick, show you guys how it works. Um, I'll leave this thing open. Um, first thing I do is I turn off my Wi Fi and then I'll run my uh, DJ mode. Ask me, yep, I'm ready. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, when I, when I ran my DJ mode, uh, one of the, one of the app, one of the rules was to quit all programs and quit the program using to record the screen, you know, duh. But anyway, so DJ mode basically just puts your computer in a situation where nothing's running in the background, um, it starts to scratch live for you. It pulls up the information you need to pull up and it goes, um, a lot of you guys, I don't know how many of you guys run automator or know anything about automator, but take a dive into it, look around to it, and you really can't mess anything up. It's just all rule-based, and it's a good way to run your tracks and, like, to organize your library, organize your computer in a way that it makes things simpler. You know, there's no point in a task that takes 10 minutes to do. You can do it with one click. Do it one click and focus on other stuff, you know? That's just me. But, um, yep, that's, that's basically how I run my computer. That's how I run my library. That's as in-depth as I can get it. Um, I'm looking over my notes right here. I went over backup. Let me say I went over the download process, the import process, the rating process in iTunes, rating process in Serato, um, the reorganization process with the queues, the, the B grid, analyzing the tracks, um, the tagging process with the hashtags and the track correlation, um, the crate refresh, the uh, making sure your, your hashtags pop up in iTunes, the iTunes refresh, um, and your backups. Um, that's about it. The only last thing I suggest you guys do um, is that after you run, after you do a gig, you do a, an event, um, as soon as you're done with your event or better yet, before your next party, make sure you refresh and clean your library. You just go to hit a history and clean. What that does is that you see how these tracks are green? Well, this track was green. When you play a track, it, show, it turns green and shows that you played the track. Um, if you clear this, the tracks will turn white. The reason why I tell you guys to do this and why I think it's so important is um, when I first started playing out, and I used to just never refresh my library 
When tracks turn green, I would always play the green tracks. And after a while, you would sound the same because you would always play the same tracks over and over and over again. Making your tracks white forces you to relook at it and reread your songs, relook at it, what you played and what you didn't play. Um, for the older guys, you guys don't have to worry about that. For the newer guys, this is something I want to pay attention to because it might help you out in the long term. Um, but yeah, pretty much that's everything that I got. I got no other questions. Uh, I mean, I got no other uh, things to share with you guys. If you guys have any questions for me, um, feel free to let me know. Here is my information. My website, you know, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, or Instagram, or whatever. Just, you know, Google High Def and you'll all uh, pop up. Um, feel free to send me a message. I'm not one of those dudes who'll be a dick about it and ignore you. I, I have no problem looking out for the newer cats or even though some of the older cats, you know. Um, I'm always around. You just hit me up, you know. And I hope this tutorial or I guess this overview of my system worked out for you. If you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. I'm always looking for better ways to manage my stuff. If you guys have any questions, hit me up. And um, yeah, that's about it. Like.